everybody, it's Ashley from The Untrained Librarian and this is basically a video log of my reading journey and today we're going to be discussing my July TBR. I have some exciting choices for this month and it's rare for me to post a TBR video because you know I never stick to them but I'm so excited about these books I had to tell you about them. So first things first, before we start filming, my hair is wet. I just showered um, and I'm wearing a hoodie. It says London, England on here um, in the middle of summer because we are on now probably like our 25th day of rain. We had a break this weekend where we did see the sun and I can't tell you how exciting that felt. But right now we are about to get 70 millimeters of rain within the next few hours and it's already starting to flood. <laughs> outside. Um, anyhow, I'm going to be cozied up today reading a bunch of books, but I thought I'd share with you some of the choices and things I have my eye on for July. It's quite a packed month. Also, I would like to mention I have recently started posting on my Instagram again. Very new, but if you all remember, I wiped out hiking last summer and I broke my phone. It wasn't like it was shattered, so everything was still functional and I didn't really have this drive to go get a new one because I had, it was fairly new. Um, and, you know, repairing the camera itself is worth more than the cost of the phone. So I ended up getting a new phone. So I'm back to posting stories about my pets, my vegetable garden, um, my day to day and what I'm eating and reading, that kind of thing. So I'm a little bit more active on there. The link is down below if you want to hop on there um, to kind of catch up in between videos that I post. So yeah, that's all out of the way. Let's get into some of the choices that I might kind of pull from this month. Okay, so the first book on this stack is going to be for Jane Austen July. I'm partaking, guys. Um, so I chose Northanger Abbey. I basically decided to read this one based on one line on the blurb here that says, Catherine's love of sensational novels leads to embarrassing and entertaining consequences. And that just sounds so much like me. Um, so I haven't had the best, I guess, experience with Jane Austen, probably just due to when I picked her books up. I don't really know why I should love them. I struggled with a few and I even started this one a few years ago and put it down for whatever reason. The only one of her works that I have sadly ever read, and it's embarrassing to admit, but here we are, is Persuasion. And that I found also a bit of a slog considering the length. I didn't think it should feel that slow. Um, but again, I started this one last night reading it by a rainy window. It was the perfect atmosphere for it. And I read 132 pages with ease, effortless ease. I absolutely loved it. So I'm not sure what's happening here. Um, both Persuasion and Northanger Abbey are published posthumously. So that's ironic as well. I'm choosing two works that were published after her death rather than the ones that published uh, were published while she was alive. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed like the humorous little tidbits and I love the character Catherine. I find her to be funny and I've kind of developed a new appreciation with how she crafts her characters and the conversations between them. That's something I really love in books as well. I remember saying that about um, uh, Sally Rooney's novels, uh, which is completely different. But anyways, um, yeah. So we'll see how I get on with this. I feel this urge to pick up more. I might run with it if I do. Um, but yeah, we'll start with one because this TBR is quite daunting already. <laughs> Next book on the stack is very different. Uh, it is called Stolen by Anne Helene Lestadius. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing her last name correctly. I tried to look up as many names in this as possible, but um, Anne is actually Sami and Tornadelian descent. So that's two of Sweden's national minorities. And so coming from an interesting perspective, this book is translated um, from the Swedish by Rachel Wilson Broyles. And this book sounds like a bit of a coming of age um, commentary on culture and identity, as well as a bit of a thriller. So you're following a very young girl and she lives on a reindeer farm. Her family for centuries have herded and kept reindeer. Um, and all of a sudden they're being hunted and there's all these unnecessary killings that continue to pile up and are ignored by other communities and the police. So finally her own community decides to fight back and try and figure out what is going on here. 
and it leads up. I heard it's very like slow paced and then suddenly erupts as she confronts one of the hunters and it then threatens her safety. So I'm really excited to read this. Not only is it taking place in one of the coldest uh, climates inhabited by humans, which is probably an, like an odd choice for a summer read, but it also is based on true events. So really excited to get to this one. I just picked it up from my local library and it's blurbed by some amazing authors on the front and the back here. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. So when I was thinking about what to read for my July TBR, I felt like I hadn't read as much history recently and I decided to prioritize two history books this month that I'd like to get to. The first being Femina. I'm so excited. This was a highly anticipated read of mine. And when my library um, just acquired it, I put it on hold right away. I think I'm the first person to read it or even open it. It smells so new. Oh, anyway, I love a good new book. And this one is full of photographs. I didn't realize that there was that many. Um, let me just show you a page here. But lots of photographs in here. This book is essentially women's voices and their entire presence has been sort of um, crossed out of historical records. And it even says here that names were actually struck out and the word Femina would be annotated beside them. Um, oftentimes the clergy had such influence over our history and who was represented. So women's voices were often cut out of that. Um, and it says here they're almost described as gatekeepers of the past, ordered books to be burned, artworks to be destroyed, and new versions of myths, legends, and historical documents to be produced. Our view of history has been manipulated. And she goes through and examines artifacts, writings, and possessions of all of these really influential women and discusses them here in this book. And I cannot wait to hear their voices. I heard it's very readable and almost reads like a fiction. So I'm so excited to get to that this month. The next history book that I chose was The Bookseller of Florence, and this is by Ross King. This is a book that I'm probably going to read in smaller chunklets because I've heard it's quite dense with a lot of names. <laughs> Regardless, it sounds incredibly interesting to me. So this is following a bookseller in the 1400s in Renaissance Italy. He was sort of a master at book making and he had a lot of very rich and wealthy clients, but his books were often described as works of art as well. So they'd be bound in velvet with jewels on them. And you're really getting a, a look at that, his career, but also how the development of you know the published novel kind of started um so starting with papyrus and then going to parchment and eventually to paper ink preparation and the turning point uh, the development of the printing press so that sort of shifted everything in this gentleman's life so i'm definitely intrigued it's a book i'm excited about for some reason reading about renaissance italy fits in with my summer feeling i don't know <laughs> why but I've also heard that um, everything that Ross King kind of writes and dives into, he goes in full throttle. So there is everything you need to know in this book. Um, again, why I've read it's quite dense, but I'm still excited nonetheless. So then I also decided to choose four books randomly that all have a connection to food in some way. I've got two fiction and two nonfiction here. So the first book, um, I was scrolling through, uh, NPR puts a book list out and uh, Your True Shelf just mentioned this list to me, or not to me, to everybody on her video. But you know, she was talking to me. I got so excited, I even told her, I'm just like, I'm gonna be looking at this all day now. And Sweet Bitter was on that list uh, by Stephanie Danler. And I thought, oh, what, this is on my shelf. It's related to food, I'm gonna pick it up. Um, Upon looking into reviews, I don't know if it's going to be ideally for me. A lot of the publishers and, you know, the blurbs that I've read have praised it, but then friends of mine who have tastes similar um, have kind of been 50-50. So it's centered in New York and you're following a young 22-year-old woman who has just landed dream job working in one of the elite restaurants. So you're kind of going over how that's a very rewarding career, but also punishing at the same time. And it kind of, it seems to shed light on the grimier, darker side of the industry. So I am excited to read about that perspective. We'll see if I get along with it. Next book is tied to food in a very dark way, but that intrigues me. <laughs> and I started it last month, but I just don't think the timing was right. I had a lot going on. So I'd like to start it again this month. 
called Sin Eater by Megan Campisi. This book ticks a lot of boxes, so I think it will be something that I enjoy given the right time. Um, it's taking place in 16th century England, and you're following a 14-year-old girl who has been caught stealing, and her punishment is to become a Sin Eater. So she is, she begins by apprenticing under a senior Sin Eater. And right at the beginning of the book, there's like a directory of all of the foods associated um, with their sin. So for example, hearsay is honey cake, lies is mustard seed, pomegranates is witchcraft, that sort of thing. So really neat, um, but I guess one day the young sin eater um, witnesses the senior sin eater walking into a funeral and on the top of the coffin was a deer heart. She refuses to eat that raw deer heart and ends up going to prison and being tortured and killed. So May, the young sin eater, wants to discover who placed that deer heart, why, what the meaning of it was, and the story sort of unfolds from there. I'm looking forward to it. Um, I'm hoping it's something that I, you know, is really atmospheric, uh, but we'll see. The next book I have on hold at the library, I'm looking at my computer because I have it pulled up here, but it's on its way, so I'll pop the photo in here. Um, but this is called Mastering the Art of Soviet Cooking, and it's a multi-generational memoir. Sounds so perfect for me because it's combining family history and then memoir and food writing and Soviet history throughout. And a mother and daughter basically cook their way through seven decades of Soviet history. So you learn about like their famous uh, Soviet burger, which I guess is like a bittersweet burger. And then also time periods like the hunger throughout World War II or um, anti-alcohol policies and kitchen debates that occurred with members of the Soviet party. So I'm just really excited to read this one. It sounds like there's little recipes littered throughout it as well. Um, so can't wait for that to come in. I also have another library book on hold that's on its way. It's called Tides by Sarah Freeman. And I had created a bookish project at the beginning of the year of 2022 new releases that I felt I missed out on. And this was one of them. It's a debut novel that I've heard a lot of praise from. And it's following a young woman. There's something devastating that happens in her life that causes her to drastically switch locations. She moves and leaves everything she's ever known to go to a small seaside town. She doesn't really want to be traced or tracked, so she doesn't use debit or credit cards. She doesn't have a cell phone. She sort of detaches from society a bit and is just swimming the oceans freely until she realizes, I need a source of income. <laughs> and it seems like she finds a job at a small wine shop and develops a connection with the owner. He's also very lost and adrift like she is, but it allows her to kind of reemerge back into society. So I'm just interested in that, especially since I had a drastic life event occur and I moved to a seaside town. <laughs> so we'll see, that one should be on its way soon. Another part of my yearly goals back in January was to read an ancient text of some sort this year and we're past the halfway mark in the year, so I thought I better get on it. I am going to read Ovid's Metamorphosis. So I'm at least going to start this. I don't want to pressure myself in any way or rush the process. I'd also like to throw out there, if you guys have any booktubers who've had read-alongs with this or you have any internet links of lectures, podcasts, anything like that, I'd like to be able to get the most out of it that I possibly can, um, especially not having, you know, taken English in school. Um, so yeah, this is a Latin narrative poem that has had so such great influence on not only writers, but sculptures and paintings in the Renaissance that it's pretty essential that I read this. Um, but I'm looking forward to hopefully having a sunny day, kind of just slowly enjoying this outside. And my last and final read for the month is a carryover from last month that I was not able to finish. So I'm hoping to continue on with The Patriots by Sana Krasikov. This is a multi-generational novel. You're following three perspectives. So you're getting neat glimpses into Russian history in very different time periods, which I find fascinating. And the writing has been really well done. You're following the grandmother, her son, and her grandson. Um, and Florence, the grandmother, initially escaped the U.S. during the Great Depression and ended up um, living in Moscow and going to school there. So it's been really fascinating, but again, I did set it down, so we got to get back on that. But those are the exciting books that I hope to read for the month of July. Let me know what you're interested in. Uh, have you read any of these, and what are you reading for the month? I would love to hear. 
I hope you're all having a really good, um, I want to say weekend because right now it's a holiday Monday, so it's a long weekend for me, but I'll hopefully get this video edited and I'm going to spend the rest of the day cozy by the window because I got all of my chores and major projects done yesterday. So I can just sink into a good book now. Um, anyways, I hope you guys are all well and it's been good chatting with you. Talk to you soon. Bye.